Good to see everyone today, and uh, Julie has me locked down behind this space, which always makes me nervous, but hello to friends out there. <laughs> and uh, over these, this last year and a half, I've been to lots of different churches uh, um, where I'm invited to preach. I'm, I basically, I do the same thing wherever I go. I yell at people uh, to love their neighbor and uh, give me stuff. That's really all I do. So I always say, you know, we'll preach for shoes. I'm a nonprofit guy. My hands are always open. I'm super needy. I need money and shoes in order to make it in the world. And uh, the LCA has partnered with me a bit as well, which I'm super grateful for and uh, keeps my health insurance going, which I've needed this last month. And so I'm grateful for that. And um, I'm going to tell you just a couple stories. Julie said I, I could uh, do uh, really just talk about Holy Kicks today. So uh, not, I'm not going to do any bit of a sermon piece. I'm going to talk about Holy Kicks, and I'm going to talk about something that's especially unique about this place. And I, I'm, want, I'm hoping that when we leave today, you, you kids are really going to celebrate that because it's a big, big deal uh, here at Well Hope. And um, <clears throat> uh, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, this is why I always say I should take all the meds uh, because uh, it always helps. Um, I, li- I don't know what I was going to say about that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to jump into the other piece I was going to say. Uh, I was going to talk about oh, when I'm out and about. I'm going to give that up. So here's the deal. Um, I keep, I'm not an a administrative guy. It's my least bit of gift. My, my board, uh, that, uh, my nonprofit board for my 501c3. I was always laughing about my lack of administrative skills. It's not my go-to gift. And I'm kind of a, I'm a little bit of a one-man operation as far as the, the main leadership goes, right? I would just surround myself with people who can help us do what we do. But um, I do keep really good records of shoes in and shoes out. And, and most of you know we were ripped off of about 500 shoes recently. We've actually got records. And that 500 number seems really crazy, except the number is almost exactly 500, give or take a couple shoes, which is a curious thing. But in those records, in those records, we have received both from shoes that, um, hey, Dove, uh, that my good friend Laura and Marge helped me purchase as well. Laura and Marge do about half our shopping. I do about half the shopping. And then probably at least about a third of our shoes are donated shoes from organizations and churches like, like you guys. And I'll put in that number, magic perfect number that um, our friends counted this week. And um, that'll go in and we have an accurate record. But over that time of both shopping and shoes uh, that we've recorded given in, it's almost 150 interactions of either purchases or organizations that we've received shoes from. And at the top of the list, it goes like this. The first thing it says is CrossFit 7070, my old gym in Monument, where my friends there knew that I was going to leave Monument, I was going to start a shoe nonprofit. But uh, mostly what my friends at my gym gave me were old shoes. And at the time, I was like, ah, maybe this will work. You know, it turns out that didn't work. The second donation came from a place where I suffered for 28 years, <laughs> where I gave it my all, Trinity Lutheran in Monument. I, they kicked me out, and they gave me a bunch of shoes to get the hell out of Dodge. That's what that, that was their gift. Here, take this and go. We're done with you, right? <clears throat> the third place, the third place on that list of 150 interactions of shoes, the third place sounds like Well of Hope. Sounds exactly like well of hope. That's what it says in my records. And as bad as I am at administration, I know that is 100% accurate. And next to that, it says the number 44. Now, it would have been super cool if it was a biblical number, but it's not. You know, 40, you guys, you guys should have stopped at 40. That would have been cool, right? Uh, but I'll take 44 over 43 any day. <clears throat> and friends, that is no small thing. Because on March 31st, uh, I was either here on that day or I might have put that in maybe two days later or something after that. We really only had a vision of what could be. I just moved to the neighborhood in North Aurora and I only had one plan and that was to walk out of my house every day and love the world. And some people started coming alongside of me when it was frightening and hard. And you guys were the first. And... uh, um, I knew Tom and Carol for a long time, and, and uh, Tom and I come at the world probably a little bit differently, and you guys said yes to what we were doing, and uh, Tom, that's no small thing, because what I did 
we did with everybody who's come alongside of Holy Kicks is we kept going. That great story of people in the, uh, in the, the wilderness, when God sends us out on mission, we often get frustrated when things go bad and you want to quit. And I got to tell you, my first year in the neighborhood, I wanted to quit every day, including my life. It's just that hard. But I didn't. I kept going. I kept going. And honestly, every week, there's this massive breakthrough. Just a, a year ago, a year ago at the end of August, we'd only uh, hooked people up with about 400 pairs of shoes. Because the process, the system, getting cred, making connections with other nonprofits was really hard. So a year ago, August, we were at 400 pairs of shoes and about a year and a half of getting after it. Today, we're at 3,150. That's no small thing. And you guys said yes to a vision a few years ago, you said, maybe this makes sense. In the midst of things like ELCA, World Hunger, that makes sense, right? Nonprofits that you work with, other organizations. Uh, you guys simply said yes to a dude down the road who had a vision, who said, I love the poor more than I love the rich. I love people who are living on the street more than ones who live in houses. I love people who are being evicted more than the ones who can pay their mortgage. I love people who are in prison more than the ones who are afraid. It's always how I've modeled my life. And, and as much as that seems to irritate people who are not those people, I get people to keep walking with me so that I can keep walking with other people. And amazing things have happened, guys. I just want to give you a couple stories about what we're up to. <clears throat> so um, when we were broken into, uh, about, I don't even know how long ago, six weeks or something now, uh, um, when we were broken into, and suddenly uh, Laura called me from the storage and said, Tiger, there's two pairs of shoes here. When did you give all these away? <laughs> I sat down on my bed and I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And the first thing I thought is that I had betrayed people who joined us. Why didn't I get a better storage unit that was more secure? Because the place would, that we could afford... Uh, I work, one of my friends I work with, she used to be a professional shoe stealer. She could actually go to Sam's, buy a TV, walk out with a receipt that looked like she paid for it, and resell it on eBay. I mean, those are the sort of people I hang out with. Uh, she no longer steals shoes for a living, but she's a great partner to give them away with, right? And all my friends look like this. And uh, I knew it was, I knew that, you know, we, we ran a little bit of a risk of being at that place, but it was affordable. And what happened is that people started to rally for us and said, hey, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. We made an amazing amount of lemonade and huge things have happened for that. When not only we recouped the shoes that we lost, but we recouped some finances too that have really helped set us up for, for some things in the days ahead. But in the midst of that, uh, there's been some other just massive breakthrough that's happened with people that have come alongside it. I'm, I'm, I'm working a situation that uh, in Colorado Springs is... Um, we'll be down there in two weeks. We're going to probably do about 300 pairs of shoes at a Title I school. We work with a bunch of Title I schools now where the majority of kids aren't free or reduced lunch. So we're going to be down in Colorado Springs with uh, some connections that we got down there. And because of that, somebody who's fairly powerful um, at, uh, down there at a news station has said, hey, we've got a hope and a dream. And if that dream comes true, uh, greater things will happen in Colorado Springs for us. And literally, these things just keep happening because we just keep saying yes to what God is calling us to. And in the midst of that, friends, I, I want to give you a couple quick little stories here. Um, one of the things that's happened this summer is that um, I've had uh, seven different um, uh, church youth groups from across the Midwest involved with something called service learning groups, which I'm not a part of. I'm just connected to the people who run it. I've come to the neighborhood to learn about poverty and incarceration and homelessness. And what I've had is my street buddies, guys who've lived outside for a lifetime and in prison, who most of my buddies are housed at the current moment, uh, at least temporarily, have brought these kids out and just schooled them on what life looks like. Walked around the neighborhood um, and took, taken a massive risk as street guys to walk around with these kids you know, from Iowa and Wisconsin, Minnesota. 
literally sending them back to their homelands in the Midwest with stories of of a dudes that don't look like them, talk like them, or live like them, and they're changing their lives back in other places. Like we've got these outcomes now, that Holy Kicks has these outcomes now that are affecting things in Minnesota. And why these kids are coming here to work alongside of other nonprofits and do work, when they come to the neighborhood, we simply say, let us just love you and teach you something. We don't need anything out of you because I got well of hope doing work, right? <laughs> and we're just going to school you on maybe thinking about what your life could look like in the future. Just trying to rattle them just enough that they might just make a little shift in how they live and look at the world. By just walking by, you know, maybe a mattress in an alley. Seeing a window that's shot out. Changing their lives years down the road that they say, I went to a neighborhood once in Colorado. I learned from these dudes that don't look like me, think like me, or talk like me. And they were supported by a church in Castle Rock that just said yes to a dream and a vision. And I got to tell you guys, like, uh, I've been here a couple times. Go way too long for Julie's liking any time. Uh, and uh, Kara's already given me the heads up. She gave me the cut already, Julie. But what I want to say is that's the impact, guys. Like, what you say yes to today, sometimes it has an outpouring on kids in Minnesota years later. The kids start to change their lives. And that's why this great story of in the, in the wilderness, when people are grumbling and complaining and say, hey, we're not getting quite what we need. Moses says, hey, just hang in there. You're going to get what you need for the day. It's going to change some lives in the future. And then a couple thousand years later, Jesus says, hey, I actually have what you need to eat here. And then 2,000 years later, some friends in Castle Rock said, I've got what you need for the day to get by. And I just, I want to thank you guys. It's no small thing. I used to come to this church. I was trying to rally Michelle to hang in there during tough times when, when, when you guys got going. Knew your story back in the day, and I did what I could from a church that was going strong, and I didn't need any help. And I came here, and I tried to rally for you guys back in the day. And then the table started to shift. And then you guys started to rally for me. And now we're rallying for people to live on this street who then in turn, two years later, start to rally for kids that come from Minnesota. And those kids are going to start rallying for somebody that they touch in the years to come. And that's why we always say, who are you walking with? We're walking with each other. Thanks.